With the last game that we checked out here on this channel being Miss Survival, I will leave a link down in the description so you can check that out if you want to, I thought now would be a great idea to do like a little micro series for the Any Good series, and well check out other survival games that I have on Steam. With today's game actually being an alpha for over 9 years, this is 7 Days to Die. The current build of the game, the gameplay footage that you are watching, is Alpha 20.6. And I ended up spending 120 hours within the survival, learning the ins and outs of the game, creating an overall definitive opinion of the game, and it goes without saying that I'm not sponsored, and I'm not associated with the dev. This is just the honest opinion of a small YouTuber, so let me know what you think also down below. So with that said, roughly, what is 7 Days to Die? It is a survival game with crafting, base building, and defense elements on the 7th day, which is known as Horde Day. So essentially, the player will navigate an open world finding things to craft with in order to create items. The zombies before the new moon will be very docile, very slow and easy to defeat. But on that seventh night they will become a lot faster, a lot more aggressive towards the player and actively search them out. Before you even step into seven days to die you have the choice and the option to go with well a pre-established generated world or create a random generated world. The footage you are watching is from my created world and I'd like to take this opportunity to say that the layout is what changes when you randomly generate. It is actually not the buildings themselves, you will see them in other worlds too. And on that note, if you do make a randomly generated world with a lot of towns, you will come across a lot of the same buildings. Other randomization elements that you will come across during your time playing this game is mainly down to the RNG, which there is a lot of RNG in this game. This is especially clear when it comes down to the looting elements, with it being affected by game state and it is also affected by where you spend your skill points because you can get bonus percentages which can make it easier to collect more resources for instance essential resources like iron, brass, stone, wood etc and a better percentage for getting higher quality loot there's also skill points that can be spent on your trading skill which means that you can buy better items from the trader so in other words the skill points and the perk system really do heavily influence the RNG for any new or returning player keep Keeping this in mind is a good idea because it means that you can get better loot early on and obviously it just helps to keep aware of. But anyway before we talk about the gameplay in further detail I do want to say before you start a game you can actually change a lot of options. You can make it so you have 300 times XP. You can change when that horde round actually begins which is what I've done for my gameplay. Turning it down from 7 days to 3 days because I'm already at end game and I have everything I need. You can also change the difficulty of the zombies depending on what time of day. For instance, in the daytime you can make it so they run so they're a little bit harder than just walking and being a bit docile. You can change the night speed and that new moon speed. Oh no, sorry, wait, blood moon. I've been saying it wrong for this video. Then there's the feral sense and just making it a little bit harder. But if you're a noob, you do have the options to make the game and the base game a little bit easier. So you can do a hardcore survival or play it a little bit more casually, especially if this game represents seven deaths a day instead instead of 7 days to die. Another additional note to make is that if you don't like survival games, there is actually a cheat mode that you can activate before going into a game. This means that you'll be able to drag and drop any item in the game into your inventory, activate god mode and fly around like Superman. Essentially eliminating all challenge from the game if you just want to build stuff and have zombies attack it. I thought that talking point was very noteworthy considering that it does take a long time to collect all the resources that you need, especially if you're going to make two bases like I did in survival that are heavily fortified and have a lot of auto turrets and stuff like that. Crafting generators, relays, getting motors, all the gas and the ammo that needs to go with it. There's definitely a reason why I spent 120 hours doing so. If you want the best possible base with the best defenses, this game is going to be a grind fest so keep that in mind. You'll have to use your time very wisely especially if you're playing solo. So now let's move on to the gameplay, the skills, the books 
books, experience and craftable items. This game does have a lot going on, I won't be able to cover it all in this video obviously, but I will do my best to try and sum things up. Ok so first and foremost the player will earn experience for killing zombies, crafting items, looting, reading books in order to gain new perks, finding recipes for food or schematics for items that you can craft in game. Every time the player goes up by one level, they will earn a skill point that can be spent in 5 categories. They are perception, strength, fortitude, agility and also intelligence. As you upgrade in these categories, you will be able to also upgrade a subcategory. These are usually more specialised skills that open up more crafting options and also better quality tools and weapons. You want to be smart about where you spend your skill points. You can buy an elixir to reset your skill points from a trader, however that's going to be very costly early on. And this is a noteworthy thing to talk about because some of the skills that you do gain from some of the subcategories, you can actually achieve with other items in the game. For instance, armor modifications can actually make pack mule useless because you can gain extra carrying capacity without actually needing to spend those skill points. Master Chef is also a little bit useless because you will find most recipes actually out in the open world. There is also candies that you can buy from vending machines which can be a temporary boost for your looting capabilities as well as your resource collection. When finding books take a note of the icon next to it. This is a simple thing but even I overlooked it when I was a newcomer. If the book symbol looks open that means that you read it, if it's closed then that obviously means that you haven't. If the book is open then you can just sell it to a trader which will help you early on on getting something like a gun if you can't find one or craft one. Or maybe buy another item that you need. On the note of guns always check toilets. There is actually a chance of getting a level 1 pistol from a toilet. I know the durability isn't great being the fact that it is a level 1 however it will definitely help you survive early on. On that note another item to look out for is nerd glasses. Pick them up, wear them and never take them off because you get a 10% XP bonus. And I guess because I'm already talking about things to find and techniques to win, if you ever find yourself away from the base and needing to fight the zombies out in the open, then I can't really do much for you, you're dead. Well, unless you dig deep and there's also an achievement for it, so bonus eh? You really don't have to take the fight if you know you're not going to win it, instead just dig down into the ground maybe about 10 blocks, blocking off the exit with frame cubes. 3 or 4 will do and you can pick them back up pretty easy after. Also so carrying ladders is a good idea not only for breaching houses or getting over obstacles in the early days, but just so you can climb out your little hidey hole. I recommend building a base near the trader and looking out for airdrops early on because they do actually drop some valuable stuff like antibiotics. Noise and sound in this game is very important too. Watch out for bits of rubbish on the floor because it will make noise when you walk over it and attract the zombies to you. On your weapons I always recommend that you try to rock a silencer, although for Horde Knight when you want to attract the zombies to a certain location, having an silenced weapon is not a bad idea because it will focus the Horde on you rather than actually finding weaker spots of your base. The AI pathing in this game is to go for the point of least resistance and once you understand that you can actually create points that do have weaker resistance and actually utilize that to your advantage by adding traps, setting up auto turrets and so on. And you'll definitely start thinking about it in that way as you do enter a later game. In doorways if you need to defend yourself as well as shoot at zombies, it is not a bad idea to get a wooden hatch and put it on the ground because that will block the zombies zombies without hurting your line of sight like a door would. Now I could be recording this video for bloody centuries with all the different tricks and techniques that you can use in this game, but I think this last one is another useful one and that is that you can jump to a ladder that is 3 blocks high but the zombies cannot get up. I literally could make a second video with all the hints and techniques, especially after 120 hours of playing this game. Maybe if you guys want to see it I could make a separate video for it, but let's now move on to well, my overall summed up opinion of the game. So let's go ahead and start with the optimization and performance. My god, no wonder this game has been an alpha for 9 years. 
it still, for me anyway, runs like a hot mess with a lot of bugs. I found that the further my game stage went on and the more I explored the map, obviously as you progress the game throws more enemies at you during that blood moon, during Horde Night, and that really did mess with my performance. I believe that in the newer versions, I think Alpha 17, I believe, the devs did in fact add more post-processing to the game, which actually does affect the performance, but I found that this game has a lot of micro stutters and a lot of freezes and a lot of skips and hitches, especially when moving into a new area or moving into a big town. I did try all the different fixes that I could find on the internet, however, that didn't seem to do anything. Even though the devs are on record as saying this is a stable version, it seems like the performance of the newer alphas are actually a little bit worse than previous versions. I believe I actually had better performance going back because this is my second time playing this game. I also found myself coming across a lot of bugs that shouldn't exist in this game, especially after 9 years. One of the bugs that actually made me quit that day that I was playing, there was a trader bug that pulled up Steam and sold the item that was in my hand. The item that was in my hand and in question here was a level 5 sledgehammer. I was very lucky to get that sledgehammer and I wasn't able to craft it and get it back because I didn't have the skill points for it. This was very early on in my playtime. Yeah, I was not happy. The second main bug that turned me off to this game, after reaching game stage 200 and getting the achievement for it, the achievement progress just stopped and it didn't record any of my progress after that for my achievements. Now, I'm not an achievement hunter or anything. That was never the intention, but the fact that I got most of the achievements and then it stopped recording my progress, like earning the achievements for crafting items, I felt like that was really awful. Just imagine being achievement hunter and having that happen to you you'd be so annoyed honestly this stuff is the most unpleasant thing about the game the bugs and also performance and is probably the main major turn off to it the devs seem to be taking sure hell of a long time to actually get this game properly running i also definitely think that they don't know the direction that they want to take this game and it feels like it has a lot of unnecessary elements in places like why do perks and modifications do the same thing i know that vary and to play it the way that you want to with the skill set that you want to but there's enough variety already in this game however there are things that make sense and things that don't make as much sense however i will give it praise on books and learning knowledge and stuff like that the schematics for items that you can craft advanced items i like the way that electricity works in this game too the overall crafting system is nice i do like the fact as well that it is like a generated world each time you play it, you're going to be playing a slight variation of the experience. I do like the fact that there is ways to casualize this game as well as make it harder and make it more of a hardcore survival. The main takeaway is that there is a lot of vary and option for the player. You can play it the way that you want to, not just in the way that you can set up a game, but also the way that you can play the game, the way you utilize your experience points, and the many building options to create a base. I am a prime example of the fact that you can spend many many hours in this game it's definitely nowhere near perfect but it was well worth the money that i spent on it so do i recommend seven days to die yes i do anyway with that said thank you for watching this video sadly this time around because it took me so long to actually play through the game and well for some reason some of the footage that i did record got corrupted so i had to record again that's why you're seeing a lot more later game stuff i'm a bit gutted that i couldn't do any extra animation for this video i wanted to do my little character right riding a motorcycle, doing a stunt jump or something, shooting a zombie in the head. That would have looked cool, but that in itself would have took me quite a few days and I really needed to get something out on the channel, so I decided to scrap that because it did take so long to make this video. With that said, smash the like button, get subscribed to the channel if you are new, and with that said, I will see you in the next video, probably, um, desolate. Anyway, thanks for watching.